Hey everybody, welcome back to Aftermath and welcome to E Street, which is where our adventure begins today. And the first thing that happens whenever you come to a new page in this rulebook is, well, you read the start section and you don't read any of the other stuff until you're told to do it. So, right here at the beginning it says, plus one time. Time is ticking. Remember, we are on the Sideswipe mission, which means we have to get inside the truck at Sideswipe and find out if there's a good cache of food, because we're starving, or our colony is starving. We have four total time to get this done, and we've just burned through our first time. Now, we actually have more time now. We can take all the time in the world. This is not an instant fail if we make it, if the timer goes up to five. But for every step we go above four, that means we have been away from the colony for too long, and that means bad things start happening. The colony gets raided by other enemies, and, and all kinds of terrible events might happen. Now, that doesn't happen until the end of our adventure. Once, whether, we, whether we succeed or fail, eventually we will go back home. And if we took too much time, we will find out via a little in-game uh, event system what actually happened. So, we are in a hurry to reach Area C3. But that's going to be a long walk, and here we are. So, one time has passed, and if this is the first time on this page, read the little intro. And these intros are always about our brave little heroes entering the place for the first time and talking about their feelings and what scares them and um, you know what what they think of the environment. And, you know, it introduces and you know and kind of humanizes the characters and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, uh, I have been to E Street before, so I'm going to skip that. Plus, you wouldn't want me to spoil the story for you in case you're going to get it yourself. So let's just go on ahead and go to setup. Place each character on the spawn spot, which is this right here. Boop. There we go. So we are ready to face E Street and. Place search tokens on the indicated spaces. You can see, search, 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 search. There are four places to search in this area. And we've got a whole bunch of search tokens up here. There are values 2, 3, and 4. 2s are easier to search. 4s are the hardest ones to search. And we are going to go through them in numeric order. So i got to find some 2s. There's a 2, 2, 2. And put them on the search spaces. Once we run out of 2s on a future page, we might start putting out 3s and then eventually 4s, depending on how long we are out. Okay, so there we go. There are search spots and draw an encounter card. And here's where the rubber hits the road. This is a whole bunch of encounters. There could be any number of events that could happen here on E Street. Every time you come to E Street, you might get a different scenario based on what encounter card you draw. And this encounter card uh, this encounter deck, like our mission deck, is growing over time. As we travel through the world, and more often than not, make enemies, we will go back to the big um, stack of adventure cards, you know, the big, uh, you know, secrets deck here, and we will add more and more and more encounters to the deck. So anyway, though, let's go on ahead and see what we are going to run into. Now, there are good things in here. It, it might be all quiet and we don't actually get attacked at all. Or we could actually run into some people who would be friendly, who we might actually try to negotiate with. But chances are, the vast majority of these cards are, uh, are going to reveal critters looking for a fight. Let's see what we're up against. Boom. It is Rat Bandits. Rat Filth, says Grumble. This lot would happily eat each other if it came to it. So, we need to find the Scrapper Leader and a number of Scrappers equal to the number of players, minus one. If we beat them, we will get some loot. Broken loot, not usable loot. Uh, might be nothing better than Scrap. But, we're going to be fighting some rats. So, what does that mean? I gotta find the um, Scrapper Leader. And, over here, we got a big old deck of enemies. Regular enemies. And, uh, down here at the bottom, we got some bosses too. And again, New types of enemies will be revealed. They'll be coming from this book full of this box full of secrets, also. But anyway, we need the scrapper leader. Let me see if I can find that really quick. D -d 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 -d. Scrapper leader. There we go. Scrapper leader and a regular scrapper. All right. So I need to get a. Re There's four. I need to get one randomly. It will be because sometimes they have different functions. They might they're whether they're ranged or melee attackers. It'll be this one. Okay. Boom. We got our, you know, this is who we're up against. And we have to randomly assign them to slots one and two on the threat track. Boom. The Scrapper Leader is in the top spot. The Scrapper is in the side. Now, the Scrapper Leader is a, a, a rat miniature that has the round base, which is this one. As you can see, Scrapper's not very friendly. Kind of scary. So, he's over here, and the his follower, the Scrapper... 
with the square base. As you might imagine, he's not a ranged attacker. He's a melee guy. You can see because he's got that gigantic wrench. Or it's gigantic for them. It'd be tiny for us. Alrighty, so we are going up against Rat Bandits. And now we do not have to beat these Rat Bandits at all. We could just try to get the heck out of here. We could just run in, run around, try to search for stuff. Because remember, we are on a mission to try to forage the area. We need to find food and bring it back to the colony while ultimately reaching our goal of the Sideswipe mission. So, uh, but if we beat these guys, hey, we get some loot. Now, here's an interesting thing. If we say to heck with it, we're just going to do a little bit of searching and try to escape, which means we have to get to this space that they're standing on. Um, if we leave them behind, they will come over here to the hunt section. They will follow us. And they might, you know, jump us at some future page. So, I mean, even if we escape them now, they probably will still come back and haunt us later. So anyway, we are it's us against them. Rat Bandits attack! And the game is afoot. So how does the game work? Well, here's a nice little summary on the back of the rule book. Best part of the rule book, by the way, is this quick rules reference. Pretty nicely done, I gotta say. And it summarizes what happens on a player turn. First, we draw till our hand size of five, although that's a bit different in my case. Then, if we drew a Calamity card, uh, then we have to potentially face a Calamity. There's different Calamities on every page of the book. Then we place Threat cards, if we drew any. Then, any cards we still have after Calamity and Threat, we use them to do actions. And then finally, at the end of our turn, we check the Threat to see, if, in a hostile situation, which is what we're in, by the way, I forgot, we're in a hostile situation. If uh, threat cards have built up enough, the bad guys will attack. If we're in a safe situation, and if threat cards build up enough, well, something bad will happen. Could be that we get jumped, or time passes, or something like that. But anyway, that is the situation we are in. I am the first player, and because I am equipped with this tattered scarf that we found a while ago, my hand size is 6 instead of 5. Although, you know what? Strictly speaking, strictly speaking, I wonder if I should be first. Because, while I get to have six cards, Grumple has the armor. And if Grumple's going to be on the front line, maybe... Yeah, you know what? I think Grumple's going to go first. We're going to have Grumple be the first player. And Grumple's hand size is a normal five. So let's just shuffle this deck up one more time, just to be safe. Whee! And let's see what Grumple's one, two, three, four starting hand of five cards gives us. Whoa! Okay, that's not good. We've got a couple of threat cards. So let's shuffle them up. Threat cards get assigned into these uh, threat spots. So uh, threat card number one goes there, and threat card number two goes there. Oh dear, that's not a good start. Because remember I was saying, um, at the end of Grumple's turn, we're going to check. If there are threat cards greater than or equal to the number of enemies, and there now are, the enemies are going to attack. If we had drawn no threat cards, then no matter what, the enemies would just stay there and not do anything. It's slowly, or sometimes quickly, as the threat cards build up on this threat track, that we have to face problems. Plus, when you draw a bunch of threat cards, you have fewer cards in hand to do stuff. So, what is Grumple going to do? Well, let's see. We've got three cards now. Grumple can use these in any number of ways. And what are we going to do here? So, we've got... A number one brilliance card. Brilliance is a is something we can use to search. So, for example, I could say, hey, you know what? Grumple is going to. Oh, first of all, okay, all cards can be used to move. If I play a card to say I want to move around on this map, basically I get to move a number of spaces equal to the number on the card. So if I play this to move, I get two movement spaces. But there are some restrictions. Two movement spaces lets me move through white dotted lines, no problem. So I could go one, two. Not that I would want to do that, but you'll notice we are here up on the top of a curve. It's a long, for us little animals, it's a big drop down to the street, which is represented by this long green line. That means we, it, it takes three movement instead of one to move across a solid colored line. So, that'd be a problem. Normally, I could play two cards. That gives me three total movement to move one space to make it down onto the street, to jump down off the curb. But, it's a green line. And, Grumble drew green cards. It's kind of hard to tell. They're, they look kind of uh, more black than green, but they're a slight green. Uh, th this winged symbol, this skill, swiftness card, it represents green cards. If I play... Remember I was saying, I could play this and that would give me one movement to go across white dotted lines? 
one green movement lets me move across a green line. So, whereas, you know, if, if, well, let me say, if I, if I had had, you know, if, say if these were the cards I had, they, these are the only cards I had, I wouldn't be able to make it because I don't have green cards. I could play these for movement, but I'd only have two total movements, so I couldn't make it down here. But since I drew these green cards for Grumble, Grumble can make a move. So Grumble's going to play this first green card not to do a ranged attack, which is the main use of this skill. This means you can initiate a ranged attack and attack from a distance. I'm going to go on ahead and discard this and move. One. And so just like that, Grumble is down on street. Well, actually, let's move here so she is closer to the bad guys over there. Here we are. All right, so Grumble's coming for you. Bad guys is what Grumble was heard to say. But Grumble is not done because she's still got a couple more cards. So now we don't need to use green for movement anymore. Because we passed the green line. Although you can see, there's green lines right here as well. Because it would be tough going getting through all this thick grass. So if Grumble moved over here, then she'd have to spend another green to move here quickly. Or she could... I mean, heck. Grumble, if she wants to... You know what I think Grumble is going to do? Grumble is going to spend this. Brilliance... Normally, you use this to search. Um, but Gr Grumble is not on a space with all these search tokens. So, Grumble is going to use this to move. The other main use for Brilliance is actually talking to people. If these guys had not decided to attack us on site, if they were willing to talk, you could use Brilliance to try to convince them to join your colony. But as it is, and you can see, enemies have a talking stat you have to beat to be able to talk them into not attacking. But anyway, she's going to use this Brilliance to move one space. And I think she will use it to move over here. And so now, she's over here in this tall grass. There's a couple of search spaces, but there is also a, a little eyeball with a number one. And what that means is, whenever you move into a space that has one of these search icons, you immediately stop your movement and you read what the book says. Alrighty, and we'll just go ahead and read this. And, that, and actually, that can be important, uh, because if Grumble had played this and she had two movement, you think she'd go one, read the thing, and two? Uh-uh. Reading makes you stop and end your movement. So it'd be kind of wasteful to move in here with the two, because then you wouldn't be able to use the rest of the two. So she's playing this to move one into this area with all that grass, and with these two search options, and let's read what space number one is. You notice a human shoe. Once a fancy, vibrant red, it is now covered by a thin layer of dust. Some say when the humans disappeared, all that was left was their shoes and wisps of dust that drifted away in the breeze. So, maybe Thanos won. Who knows? Oh, was that... I, 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 anyway, sorry. I just didn't say anything more. I don't want to have any spoilers. Um, so, anyway, that was it. Just a little bit of flavor text. Nothing uh, major going on here. But, Grumble still has one more card. She could use this... Well, she can't use it to search because she needs brilliance. And she just gave up her only brilliance. So she can't search here. She could use this to move some more... Or she could use this to make a ranged attack. Because it's interesting, everybody can make a ranged attack. Even though Grumble's main weapon is a steak knife, and you can see, it's a big old honking steak knife, um, Grumble can still... It basically, you can imagine, she picks up a pebble and throws it as a weapon. So, because we she is adjacent to these guys, she can make a ranged attack. So let's go on ahead and do that. She is going to play this... Although, although, she doesn't have to make a ranged attack. She has another option. You have a list of things you can do on your turn playing cards. You can communicate, but only when it's safe. You can do a melee attack, which means you have to be in the same spot as a bad guy and have to play an appropriate card. You can do a ranged attack, which is what she's thinking about doing right now. You can scavenge, which means you spend brilliance to hit the search spots. You can recover, which means if you're on fire or you're bound, there's a whole deck of cards if you are... Uh, trapped, or rattled, or on fire, or badly hurt. Uh, some of these things can be recovered from, and you can do a skill test to see if you can shake off whatever the effect is. So you can try to recover. You can move. You've been seeing me do that. You can equip and trade. If you are in the same space as another player, you can uh, play a card to basically initiate trading of resources back and forth. You can also, and this is what I was looking for, you can encourage. 
You can give an action card as many times as you want to other players on your team if they have two or fewer cards. And here's the thing, Messiah doesn't have any cards. So if Grumble wants, M Grumble, instead of using this to do a ranged attack, Grumble could give this card to Messiah. Because who knows, Messiah on his turn might not draw any green cards, and then he'd have to work really hard and waste a lot of cards to jump off the curve. So she, she wouldn't attack, but you know what? She's not the greatest ranged attacker in the first place. Messiah, who has uh, his toothpick crossbow is much better suited for ranged attacks. So Grumple could throw a pebble, try to hit these guys, and hey, they've only got one hit point. If she succeeds, that would be great. But if she misses, she would have wasted this card. And since she's not very good, she doesn't get any bonuses for ranged attacks, I think she... Although, here's the other thing, too. Remember, at the end of her turn, the bad guys are going to attack because the threat built up really quick. They're both going to attack. And since Grumple is the closest, they're just going to swarm her. But... She has armor. So, you know what? I think this armor gives her, gives her plus one defense if she gets attacked. But if she wants, she can put one or two batteries to get even more defense. I think it's time. Vroom, charging up the batteries on the armor so she has more defense. And she is not going to take a shot at these guys. She is going to encourage her teammate. So, this is the beginning of Messiah's Hands of Cards. All right, so she's done. She has no more cards. Without cards, you can't do anything except for free actions like spend batteries or whatever. So she is done. And remember, at the end of her turn, if the threat, if you're in a hostile and there's enough threat, the bad guys will attack, and that's what's going to happen. They're going to attack in this order. First the leader, and then the scrapper. So let's take a closer look at this leader with his threat card. He, The threat has the number one. It could have been a 1, 2, or 3, randomly. That means he's going to take an aimed pot shot. If it had been a 3, he would use his rusted wrench, uh, which hits much harder, is much tougher to dodge. An aimed pot shot is easier to dodge. Uh, this attack targets the furthest character within its range. All right. So, and interestingly, when you do an aimed pot shot, the uh, scrapper leader has no movement. So, if this had been a 3, the Scrapper Leader would have up to 2 movement to try to run up and attack somebody, and if it was a successful hit, that character would be badly hurt. That'd be badly bad. But fortunately, he's just going to stand his ground and take a shot, which means he doesn't move. He has a range of 3, and Grumble is well within that range, and uh, the strength of the attack is 4. Now, the damage done is just 1 point of damage. Grumble uh, potentially is going to take 1 damage from this pot shot. And here's how it works. We know... It, it's like the Scrapper Leader already rolled uh, an attack die and has a base 4. Grumble now needs to have defense of 4. Grumble has a base defense of 1. She's so big and tough. She's a big old guinea pig. She already has 1 defense, 1 more defense with the armor, and then 2 more defense. So, Grumble is already protected. But not quite. Things might not go her way. She needs a total of four defense to avoid taking this hit. She's got four defense. But whenever in combat we try to attack the bad guys or the bad guys attack us, we got to roll them bones. The white die modifies Grumble's ability. So Grumble might lose two of her armor or might gain three more armor. The black die modifies the bad guy. So that having to hit a target of four might go up to be requiring to hit a target of seven. Or it might drop to be a target of two. So um, Grumble has spent her resources. And, you know, and if Grumble had had drawn any defense cards, had drawn this, she could have played this card to increase her defense if she saved it and didn't use it for movement or something like that. But as it is, she's got her defense of four. Let's see what it increases to. Oh no, her defense dropped to two. All right. Well, if the bad guys drop, it's fine. Let's see what the bad guys do. Oh, it stayed the same. So the, um, the she had to hit a four plus zero. She had a four minus two means no, even with the souped up, powered armor. She takes a hit and boom. She has lost one of her four hit points. Oh dear. That armor did not save us at all. And the fight ain't over, folks, because now the other scrapper is going to attack, the non-leader. And he has a two, so that says he's going to clobber. Alright, he is not taking a pot shot. He, because he's got that gigantic wrench, is much more likely to want to try to physically attack. He can move up to two spaces and his base attack is going to be five. So, he will move. Ah! 
boom, and he's now on the on the space. And by the way, enemies do not they, they don't have to pay extra to move through tough terrain like we do. They can always move around. So he's coming, and now um, Grumple needs a defense of five. Remember, Grumple already has a defense of four because she's charged up her armor, and uh, she has some built in. So she has a defense of four. Let's see if she does better this time. Four. She's gone up to six. But, all right, so she's beating the attack of five, uh, which is what the guy hit with. Let's see what happens. And, oh, the fu went up to... So, boom! She has taken another point of damage. Oh, no. Uh, so all of that armor did not save her. Things have just gotten a bit scarier, folks. But that's okay, that's okay. Um, if she takes her four total hit points, what happens is she flees, and that means poor Messiah is left by himself to take them on or to get out. Um, because the character who flees will come back full of hit points, although they will earn the badly damaged or the badly hurt effect card. Um, but then they will be able to keep on playing. So... All right, so that was not a good start. Perhaps she should have taken a pot shot after all, because these guys seem to do pretty well against her. But she is done. It is now Messiah's turn, and let's see if he can turn the tide. All righty, so he is going to draw one, two, three, four, five. And remember, he has card. Now, before he started drawing, if he wanted to, he could have discarded this card. So he could draw up to his hand size of six, but he's going to keep this, because it guarantees means he can get off this curb. So he's going to draw. Uh, he has his hand plus one more, because his hand size is six. And let's see. Show me what you got. All right. Oh, by the way, I forgot. After a fight is over, you know, once the bad guys take a, a round, no matter how many threat cards were out, they all go to the discard pile. All righty. So now the bad guys might not attack for a while. Uh, you know, they, they made a big, strong opening hit, and oh no! Uh, and fortunately, only one threat card came out. So that means they're not going to attack at the end of my turn, since there's only one threat will be safe, and then Grumple will have a whole nother turn before they might attack again. So this is when we can turn stuff around. Here's a two, and look, I got a bunch of green as well. And I've got a red. Red is what you use for melee attacks. And also, I should say, I've got two white cards. I definitely got a better hand than what Grumple started with. That was not a strong start. Two threat cards right out of the gate, and no melee attacks, which is what she really wanted to do. Rush right up there and start pounding on them with her steak knife. Alrighty. So, that's okay. That's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna make it, folks. Don't worry. So, I've got a bunch of stuff I can do. Now remember, I can use any of these to move. But if I want to get off the green, I'm going to have to either spend three total movement or one green movement. So, first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all... Ooh. All right. So, I've got, th this, this, this is going to be an interesting choice. I've got a bunch of options here. Um, because before I jump off the curb, I would like to come over here and search. Remember, that's what we're here to do. We're here trying to find food to get back. Um, to get back home. So... You could say, well, yeah, I could go on ahead and just play this one, and that would let me move over here. And then, hey, I've got a uh, one brilliance to try and search. And it just so happens, Messiah is a clever little mouse. He always gets plus one on any brilliance tests. So he'd really have a, a strength of two to try and search there. But this is the interesting thing. Whenever you attempt to make a skill test, whether it's to scavenge or to attack or to talk to somebody or to recover from a, you know, any, any type of skill test at all, you first play a card that matches the icon. For searching, you need brilliance. So you could play this. Although, alternately, you could play this because white cards are wild cards. They can stand for anything. So you first play a card. Now, you can boost that card and give yourself a better shot before you have to roll the dice by, by boosting it with additional cards. Once you've played a card, though, the only thing you can boost it with is other cards that match the color. So if I play this, then I could only play other yellow cards, and I don't have any. Or you can boost with cards of the same number. So if I play this to start this search, I could boost it, even though it's a different color, because it's a number one. So I would therefore, the search would have a, a, a value of two, and I'd have a better shot of doing this search. Um, but let's say I go a completely different way, because I really want to get this, and I don't, wanna, I don't want the dice to mess me up. 
I could initiate the search with this white card. And I could say, I'm using it as a brilliance, and so I could boost it with other cards that have the same number. So I could boost it with this, and with the same color, so I could boost it with this. And now, um, by playing three cards, I have a default search of four. And even if the worst thing could happen on this die, which is a negative two, I would still succeed. But on the other hand, I've burned through all my cards. I've only got two more cards here. So, that is an interesting situation. Do I want to guarantee I cannot fail, I will search here? Because here's the thing, if I go the other way and I just do a brilliance and I boost it with this, I might roll a negative one or a negative two and then I've wasted these cards and I won't get anything. Or do I go the other way? I start with this and then I boost, boost, but I burn through. Because here's the thing, I gotta decide, well, I want my turn won't be over. Either way, I'm gonna still have some more cards. And then I have to decide, hey, I've got this green that Grumple gave me. I can use it to get down, or I could use it to do a ranged attack. And that's kind of my thing. So I think that's, I think that's what's going to happen. We d I do not want to fail at this search, because I, I, I don't want to waste time up here, because time is ticking. So I am going to initiate the search with a white card. Oh, there's one more thing, by the way. These white cards are so valuable because they're wild, so that you can initiate any act with them. But each of us has cool little special powers. I am lucky, and I've got team focus. To activate those powers, you got to spend white cards because that's the color. And so by burning these white cards, I'm giving up my chance to be lucky. Lucky lets me reroll the die if it doesn't go my way. But I don't. I know I don't need to. I'm starting with this. I'm boosting it with a with a similar number, and I'm boosting it with a similar color. So my total is four, and now I'm going to roll. Now, but when the combat was happening before, I rolled both dice. You only roll both dice pretty much in combat. You roll one for you and one for your opponent. Um, the search tokens aren't considered an opponent, so I just roll one. Let's see what it is. It it is the minus two. Wow. So if I hadn't paid over through the nose like this. Well, here's the thing. If I hadn't paid through the nose, if I just tried to go like this and I'd failed, I could use this card to activate my lucky ability to re-roll. But I went the other way. It all worked out fine. Even with the 2 I have succeeded in searching. And what did I find? I found cheese! Sweet, sweet cheese food. Alrighty, that is good, because that's what we're out here to find. We are foraging to... Oops, I'm sorry, that's the time tile. Oopsie, not the time dial. The food dial. Boop, boop. Yay! We need to find 13 food, or else people will go hungry. We got So we're up to 3 now. We got a long way to go. Alright, so that was that. These cards are gone. And hey, I've still got two cards, and my next choice. Do I use this to get off the curb? Because um, here's the deal. I could use this to get off the curb. I could even say, oh, I'm going to move two spaces. One, two. I could rush over here to this guy, and then I could use this to initiate a melee attack. Because, as you might imagine, strength is how you initiate melee attacks. I could try to take out the leader if I wanted. But here's the thing. I'm not very strong. Grumble is very strong. Gets plus two on melee strikes. I am much better suited for ranged. So I'm going to stay up here on the curb, and I'm going to launch a ranged attack. Which means it's going to start with a value of two. It is going to get modified by a die. The bad guy has... Let's see, it's the scrapper, right? The bad guy has a seven. I got to hit a seven. I'm starting with a two. Maybe I could get up to a three. And maybe, although maybe his seven will drop to a minus two. Now, I only have to get one hit and the guy's toast. So, this would be ideal. Um, I haven't rolled yet. But that's not all. I'm starting with a two, but my toothpick crossbow says I get plus one. Um, so, I'm really at a three. And Messiah is smart and swift. I have plus two. So I'm looking at one, two, three, four, or is it five? I've got five total going into this attack, and I want to see that plus three. Show me that plus three. Boom! All right, six. All righty, I have hit the six that I... No, I haven't hit the six. Ah! One, two, three, four, five, six. No! But all is not lost. There is a chance... Because all i got to do is hit a 6. I don't have to go over a 6. So if I roll the negative 1 or the negative 2, I've got a 33% chance of hitting this guy. Come on, evil black die. Show me negative 2. That is the wrong kind of 2. Oh, folks, this is not going well for our team. So the defense goes up to 9 versus my 6 means, well, I wasted this card. So that's that. 
And I've still got one more card. Yikes. And, um, well, I can't much... Uh, I can't institute a melee attack because I'm not on a space with somebody. I can't use it to move through this because this, is, this would give me... This would let me move through red lines quickly, but it won't let me move through... So I could use it to run away, but here's the other thing I can do. At the very least, what the heck, I'll encourage Grumple and say, Hey Grumple, you have at least one melee card on your turn! Alright, so I am done. And at the end of my turn, I check the threat level. The threat has not gone up high enough, so the bad guys aren't going to attack. And now Grumble needs to take care of business, because Grumple's already been hit twice. So, let's fill up Grumple's hand, and Grumple has to decide, is, he gonna, is she going to discard this card? Um, to draw one, two, three, she's going to draw four and she has that, or she could draw five if she gets rid of that. So the thing is, she's going to try and hit this guy, and she's going to try to put him down, and then she's probably going to try and run away, so that when this guy, oh no, here's the thing, maybe the other guy's not going to attack. It depends on whether we have threat cards. About one in six cards in this deck is a threat card. So on average, you should be usually seeing a, a one threat card every turn, give or take a little bit. Um, but... Uh, uh, am I going to throw that away? I mean, that is a guaranteed plus one on the melee attack we're going to try and do on this guy. And it lowers the chance of drawing a threat card. So let's just going to stick with that. And let's see what we got. No threat, no threat, no threat. Oh! Well, we didn't get threat. We got the, um, what's it called? The Calamity card. Okay. So remember, first you draw, then you deal with Calamities. Whenever you draw the Calamity, before the player's turn goes on, we have to see if a Calamity strikes. It's right here. It's this, this here. So basically what happens is we check our time. Our time is one. We roll one of the dice, add that to the time. If the number hits the target, a Calamity strikes. We're already at one. If we if we roll a two or a three, we're going to face a Calamity. Now I want to roll low, baby. Roll low, low, low. And it's a zero. So the Calamity passes us by. This gets discarded. There is one Calamity card in this deck. So every time you go through that deck, uh, sooner or later, you're gonna some more bad stuff could happen. All right, so we didn't draw any more threat. We didn't face any Calamity. And Grumple is up. Oh, and Grumple has a lot of defense. That's very nice, but not much offense. It is a good thing that um, our Messiah here, Mezzi, uh, handed over this because otherwise Grumple could... Grumple didn't draw any white cards, which are wilds. Grumple could do a search. And hey, she is in a search space. But she needs to attack. We need to fight! So, first of all, Grumple is going to launch an attack with this. Boom, boom, boom. And, remember, uh, so, uh, we can add other red cards. We don't have any or other similar numbers. So, Grumple's attack is a 2. 3, 4, 5. Grumple is starting at a 5, trying to beat this guy. But, you know what? 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 Actually... Here's the thing. Grumple's Steak Knife is interesting. It gives you plus one for every attack, but plus two if you're attacking a leader or a boss. So I think it makes more sense. This is a bit wasteful. We have this. Rump Grumple could do some searches here, but Grumple's going to use this for movement. Oh, no! Grump... Uh, one, two... Right, Grumple needs three green to get across here, to get through this grass, to get to this guy. Or one, two, three to go around. If she had a green card, she could just spend one to get over here. So this is painful. Grumple could pay. This is three defense. And you saw how bad Grumple needs to hold on to this defense. But Grumple could discard this card to go, to, to move through the green line to get over here. And then Grumple could do an attack where she has plus one more strength against the boss. But oh my gosh, she has thrown away such a huge card. But you know what? Uh, the best defense is a good offense, so that's what she's going to do. But before she does that, before she does that, she's going to do a quick search. Because in the middle of combat, you can still search. Uh, she's still here. There's two things. She's going to try and search. She has the two she needs, but she rolls. Just don't show me a negative one or two. Show me a zero. Show me a one. Show me a two. Or a three. Three plus two is five. Grumple has successfully searched. Now, Grumple has a special power as well. If Grumple had any white cards, could could have discarded a white card to convert all of these things instantly into food. But of course, she can't seem to get white cards, sadly. But she succeeded at this search, she found this, and it's two scrap. 
Now, normally, we would, we would increase the amount of scrap we have, and we use scrap to build all kinds of items. Like, we use scrap to build this solar collector, and the armor, and stuff like that. And you can use scrap to build upgrades to your colony when you bring it back home. But, since we are on the Forage mission, all scrap prizes, when we search, are treated as food. Maybe. Right? It is May. R. Okay, you know, so we just got two more food, which is the whole reason we got out of bed today. So she did that. Now, super expensive. Throwing all this defense away. That's a one, two, three to get over here. So she can initiate an attack and then boost it with her last bit of defense. So that means she's got two, three, four, five, six. Right? That should be fine. Let's get some more. Plus, don't forget, this guy has... um. Right, where is his armor? Oh, yeah, they both have seven armor. So, let's do this to this. Five, six, seven, eight! Boom! But the bad guy... And you can roll these at the same time if you want. I'm just kind of drawing out the drama. The, all right, so, she was... I've, I've forgotten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She, uh, she had her eight, which is more than enough. But now, the bad guy... Show me a zero. Show me a negative one. Show me a negative two! Oh, yes! Boom! Good night, Scrapper Leader. Good night. Although, this has created a problem. The Scrapper Leader is out. And it just goes to, you know, the, uh, the bad guy card. But, whenever a bad guy gets taken out, the remaining uh, bad guys slide up one. And now, at the end of, of, uh, of uh, Grumple's turn, the bad guy is going to attack. Because, with only one bad guy, you only needed one threat card. So, that was that. And, okay, Grumple's turn is over, and at the end of her turn, there is enough threat. So, this scrapper says it's clobber in time because of the number one threat card. Right. Okay, so, uh, can move up to two spaces, and after attacking... Oh, wait, shoot! Oh, dear. I totally, for... I totally forgot about that. I totally missed that. Um... This is why you watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on, folks. Always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. When, um... Oh, when, when, when... I can't think of her name. When Grumble was hit, she was rattled. So we, she has this effect. Right, that you where you got a rattled card. She's been, she was rattled, which means you cannot pay more than one action card into a skill test unless it's defense. And to get rid of it, you have to do a defense test. Difficulty four. So, all right, you know what? She made it anyway. But basically what that meant was when she did the attack, she, she, what, she used this. She wasn't able to put this up to increase the uh, skill of the attack as she was rattled. Uh, even still, she succeeded. And that means she still got this defense card. Which means she could try to use this defense card as a uh, skill test uh, to... Right, she needs difficulty four. If she does this, she'd have one. She would have to roll the three. That's probably going to fail. So I think she's done. So she is rattled until she shakes that off. Or until she gets knocked out. Or she flees. And then when she comes back, she'll trade rattled for badly wounded. All right, so... Right. Uh, it still worked out. She had enough, even without that one extra, because she was rattled. And now, bye-bye, Mr. Man. And it's going to be the Scrapper's turn. The Scrapper... Oh, but she still had this. And we had to decide, was she going to hold this onto this to be defensive? Or she could give it to our buddy here, because um, we are equidistant. He, This guy is equally far away from Grumble and from Messiah. So, when he moves, it's our choice. We could say, hey, come at me, you big ugly dope. So, I, she could give it to Messiah, who hasn't taken any damage, or she can hold on to herself, because she does still have the armor. Uh, what the heck? She's brave. She, she says, yeah, she's going to hold on to this for a little bit of defense, because she knew at the end of her turn, the, um, the Scrapper had a number one. The Scrapper can move up to, three, two, up to uh, two steps. He'll move over here. And he is going to attack. And now here's the thing. She cannot become rattled again. So that, you know, we wouldn't want both our characters to become rattled. So again, she needs a defense of five. She needs a defense of seven. That's not good. All right. Let's see. Her defense again is one, two, three, four. And she'll play this five. Ah, oh, show me the two. Show me the three. Uh, so I have a 30% chance of shaking this off and not taking another point of damage. Ah. No! 
Oh, oh no, she has taken her third hit. Grumple, no! Okay. So, say la vie. The threat goes away. And that was Grumple's turn. It is my turn again. And now I'm drawing one, two, three, four, five, six. Boop. And let's hope we can turn this situation... Oh no! More threat! And this time... Okay, he's still going to try and clobber. And since he's on space with Grumple, there's no choice. He will stay in chief. And if he hits Grumple one more time, Grumple fl um, is gone. Oh, you know what? Well, Grumple's turn is over. Whenever you are standing on an exit space, one of the actions you can do for free, you don't have to spend a card, is to leave. Grumble could have left, but she didn't. All right. So, all right. Um, so this guy's going to attack, and he might take Grumple out. So that's a scary thing. But uh, don't worry. Messiah to the rescue. Because Messiah has a big, juicy card and another big, juicy card. And, um, all right, we're going to play this. It gives us one green movement to move down here. Phew. All right. We are now in range to hit this guy. All righty. Messiah then says... All right, how are we going to attack? Well, we could initiate a ranged attack, because remember, white can be anything, and then we can pump it up with other threes or other white. I don't have any other white, but I have a pump it up. That means a ranged attack of six, seven, eight, nine. We are putting this guy down. Don't worry, Grumple, I'm coming for you. Six, seven, eight, nine. Eight! Oh, dear. All righty, and um, uh, going up against this guy's seven, show me a negative number. All right, even worse, boom. Good night, Gracie. And um, the scrappers are no more. All right. Although, interestingly, the threat remains. Because this threat didn't resolve with that scrapper attacking, it's still going to be here. All the bad guys are gone. It's safe now. We are safe! Okay, we've played these cards. And it's still Messiah's turn. So Messiah can move in defense. We want to go on ahead and search. Messiah doesn't have any more search cards. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, and these aren't really going to help, but Messiah could use them to say, go over here to start searching over this space. Plus, hey, you know what? If we walk over here, we get a little bit of story. If we walk over here, we get a little bit of story. Also, if we walk over here, we um, this is a place where we can hide, where bad guys will always ignore you. So if somebody's really in trouble, they could run over here and hide, and the bad guys will ignore them. Unless... They are considered to be a big character, which unfortunately Grumple is a big character. So a big character cannot hide. Alrighty, but anyway, we're safe. We um, so uh, what are our friends going to do now? Well, Grumple, Grumple uh, did not come out of that very well. So there is something else we can do. We can nest at the end of a player's turn, and that's our opportunity to heal and whatnot. Although there's a downside to nesting. When you nest, your batteries run out. So these batteries are going to keep running this armor until we rest. R nesting would allow us to get rid, you know, to heal Grumple a little bit, but we'd lose those batteries. But hey, we've got more batteries, and we've got a solar collector, so we can make more batteries if we need to. Actually, that's what the solar collector does. When you nest, generate two batteries. Uh, but although, you can only do it once per mission. So, those batteries didn't help at all um, against those big scary uh, rats. They are members of the Dead Tooth Gang. They have given us, they have rickrolled us so bad. I'm thinking the next time we go out on a mission, we are going to try to hunt them down and put an end to them because we are done getting beaten up by the Dead Tooth Gang. Anyway, though, so back to Messiah. His turn isn't over yet. He could use these to move, he could give them to Grumple because Grumple has two or fewer cards. Um. Or could just discard. Or at the beginning of his next turn, he could discard him. Oh, with that, I'll just go on ahead and hold on to him for now. So that's it. It is now Grumple's turn. Grumple draws one, two, three, four, five cards. And, oh no! Threat is building. And you might think, who cares? There's no bad guys around, right? Remember, where's the reminder? Um, oh, the reminder is on the rule book. When you're in a safe zone, if... Threat gets to gr greater than or equal to four, do the hazard entry. And the hazard entry is surge. Increase time, which means the longer we wait here, the more time is burning and the more danger our colony is. Remember, we're in a race to get through here. All right, so, uh, plus one. If there are enemies in play, the situation becomes hostile. If you're trying to talk to people, they attack. Uh, otherwise, discard all threat cards. So, the only threat in here now is we are burning time. But are we going to burn time to search? Because here's the thing. Here's the thing, folks. On my turn, 
I could have said, you know, before Grumple's turn started, before we knew all this threat came out, I had two more. I could have used this to move here. And then I could have said, bye-bye, we're leaving. And maybe I should. Because now I've put us at risk of burning time because we've gone through so many threat cards. How many threat cards have we seen now? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I think there are six. So I think we've seen them all. So we're a bit safe. Uh, I, don't, I believe there are no more threat cards in here. I believe there are six. I could be wrong about that. But anyway, so I stayed. More threat is building up. And now Grumple can do some stuff. Um, right. What is Grumple going to do? Grumple could search. Yeah. All right, so Grumple will uh, spend this three to move one, two. Oh, you know what? Actually, yeah, Grumple used that three to move over here. And then, remember, Grumple has this forage ability, which is spend some white cards, discard all tokens, and just get, find the cheese. She's going to spend this white card. It's overpaying because she only has to pay one. She's going to discard that to forage, and this gets discarded, and we just get two cheese. Because that's what we're here for anyway. Now, it turns out this was two cheese regardless, but hey, the forage ability let us do it by spending a card instead of risks and rolls and all that. So we just got two more food, and then Grumple says, hey, I'm going to use this to move back here, and now I'm gone, man. Solid gone. Okay, Grumple is done. It is my turn, because we haven't gotten out yet. One, two, three, four, five, six... Now we'll see if I was right that there are no more threat cards. There aren't any. Okay, cool. I would still like to search this last thing. I got a bunch of cards. No high numbers, though. No greens, unfortunately. Oh, wait, oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I forgot. I still had cards from the last round. So let's shuffle this up. Because I had to decide, was I discarding these? All right, Grumple's out. I could just leave. But I don't want to leave without getting all the food we can. So I'm going to discard this. I'm keeping this green so I can move through the green. And then we draw five more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, boom. This is perfect. I'm going to spend one to move back through the green and come back here. Why did I move over here? Wasn't I shooting at stuff? Why am I over here? Did I do this as an example? Uh, I'm confused now, but we'll say I did at some point. Uh, folks, always watch the thing on subtitles turned on because Paula would have noted if I did that because I, I stayed my, kept my distance, didn't I? I don't even remember what's happening. All right, um, so I moved back. I am going to initiate a brilliant search. I have one plus one is two, and I'm going to boost it with that, and I'm going to boost it with that. That's four. I can't fail. Even with the minus one, I still find it, and I got normally two scrap, but instead it's going to be two more food. Bip bop. And now, I've got a three. I'm going to spend three yellow to move back to the green. And then I am out as well. And just like that. do 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 Phew! We have made it through the first of several locations. And while we got a lot of food, we got over half the food we need to feed everybody, it came at a price. Grumple is not... Fe Grumple's feeling pretty grumpy. Alrighty. But anyway, we are leaving E Street. And it says... Every page has a description of what happens when you exit. When leaving this exit, move your party to an adjacent space on the travel map. See leaving on page 6 of the rulebook for more info. So, here we are back on the map. We were on E Street all this time, and we now have a choice. We, have, we can go to Enjo and read page 43, or we can come down to Gutter Doom and read page 7. So, uh, and remember, ultimately, our goal is to reach C... Three. So we need to get down here. So Enjo is fine, then we can head down this way, or Gutter Doom is fine, we can head down this way. Let's go south. Let's go to Gutter Doom. Alrighty, which means we have to check out page seven. Alrighty. Beep -de -bop -de -boop. Page seven. And hey, folks, this is Gutter Doom. Gutter Doom is an important place because it's got a whole little story. Um, devoted to it. Now, you will uh, sometimes when you come to areas like E Street, hey, they're just pretty nondescript areas. They're you know they're, they're just crossroads on the way to get where you need to go. But sometimes you come to areas and they are a big story-driven area. Gutter Doom is one of those areas. And so, if this is your first time on this page, read the following. Otherwise, go to page nine. Now, I'm not going to read this. I will actually talk about this a little bit in the final thoughts, but I'm not going to read it uh, because, hey, you might want to... Uh, or, you know what I want to do? I'm going to just put it on screen so you can read it if you want to. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put this over here. You can pause, folks. Pause. There's the first half. And then you can, can continue. 
And there is the second half. I pause again. All right. And if you didn't want to read it, obviously, you just didn't read it. But anyway, now, so that was an introduction to the area. Uh, and now it says, go to page nine. And here we are at the entrance to Gutter Doom, where more time passes. Ah! And read the following. We, we crawl, or read the following, whether we've been here or not. You crawl through the grass on all fours in, um, you, until you see a stop sign that signals you are near the notorious entrance. The, rustled, the, the rusted sign, felled by the calamity, blocks your path and also provides cover. Messiah hops as high as he can, straight up into the air, so you can glimpse over the post at the opening. Just some of those weird white meeklings, he hisses, ducking back down. So, set up. We start out in this space. We um, place more search tokens. So, we need to get some more twos. Alrighty, some twos. And so we put one there, and one there, and one there. Okay, that's it. All right. So put out search tokens, retrieve mission card five, and encounter card 13 from the discovery deck. That's what I was talking about before. Now, I have to admit, I've already been here before. Um, so I already know my way around. So I've already retrieved these. But if this were the first time we'd ever come here, a new mission would get added to our mission deck, and a new encounter would get it added to our encounter deck for having reached this area. All righty. Uh, and now, we have an encounter. It doesn't doesn't have us draw from the encounter deck. It says, counter, number of meeklings uh, equal to the number of players minus one. There are two of us. That means we need one meekling. Let's come back over here to the decky deck. Find the meeklings. No, not the bosses. Uh, meeklings, meeklings. Uh, meeklings, here we go. So there are there's basically four of each type of, of, the, of the creatures. These are cute little mice. They are nowhere near as tough as the gigantic rats. These guys are much easier to beat. So well, there's going to be one meekling here. Oh, by the way, I forgot. Um, when we took out... or when, when you leave an area, the threat resets as well. So that's why I wanted to leave before you know we burned more time. But we left the threat uh, reset. Now there's going to be a meekling in this new area. And it is just a regular meekling, not the leader. It's the octagon one. He's over here. Okay. All right, so thank you for that. And now we have a choice. Attack the weird meekling and read section E1, or sneak past the meekling and read section E2. Now, we took a real beating. And here's this isn't even where we need to go. We just need to get over here to this exit and keep traveling. Um, but, and you'll right by the exit, there's a lot of searchy options so that we can find more stuff. So it is in our best interest to beat feet and get through here ASAP. But there's a problem. This is all flooded puddle here. So right from the get-go, we need blue cards to be able to move through this water. Otherwise, we have to spend a lot because it takes us a long time to move. Now, here's an interesting thing. There is a solid white line here. Double white lines means that they block movement and line of sight. You, I mean, you can't move through them, you can't shoot through them. Single white lines mean you can't move through them, but you can still shoot. So, although this Meekling, does he shoot? Yeah, he can shoot. So he can run over here and start shooting at us. Although we could shoot back at him across this uh, this fallen stop post. Although, there's another interesting thing. You know, it's going to be slow going to go through this blue and then go through this blue and all this to do all this swimming unless we draw blue cards. But, Grumple, her basic power is throw. She can throw a heavy object or another character up to two spaces away within line of sight. So if Grumple gets a white card, she can just pick up her buddy and throw him over here. Just throw him, land right on top, and they can have a fight or whatever. So anyway, so those are some of the stuff we have to bear in mind as we decide whether we are going to attack. If we attack and we beat this guy, we'll get two food. Um, and we have to consider the situation hostile, so he's going to come for us. If we try to sneak, we have to draw an environment card. And there's a whole deck of those. Where are they? Ah. Here's the environments. Dust feather, sentries, hornet drones, fire, escorting, rodent traps, low visibility, heavy objects, forced movement, traverse, and uh, you better believe there's probably going to be more unique environment rules that will be discovered later on over the course of the game. So it says if we want to sneak, we have to deal with him as a sentry, which means every time we move, after we're done moving, we have to pass a sneak test. And as long as we do that, the little guy will leave us alone because he won't have seen us. And if we fail, then if I recall correctly, he will attack. Right. And while we move, so we can sneak. So we could just avoid a fight altogether uh, by sneaking. Or, I mean, heck, she could just throw me. Now, we have to make this choice before we draw our first hand of cards. Also, another thing I should say that's important to bear in mind um, Grumble was the first player 
on the last page. So now, um, the, whoever's the first player is supposed to be holding the campaign dashboard. And when you come to a new area, the campaign dashboard goes to the next player in clockwise order. So on this in this area, unfortunately, Grumble can't go first to throw me over here. I'm going to go first, which means I'd be wasting time if I don't try to get through this water as fast as possible. All right. So are we going to sneak? Are we going to fight? Um, yeah. He's just one little guy. So, and sneaking will potentially slow us down. Plus, if we beat him, we get cheese. And we're here to get cheese. So no sentry duty today. It's hostile. We are ready to take this guy out. And now the game can begin. And I draw one, two, three, four, five, six. The deck is almost empty, which means we'll soon have to reshuffle and put everything in. No threat, no calamities. And I am on my way. And not a single blue card. I draw six cards, not a single blue. So that means I have to spend three total movement to cross this line. All right. Well, then let's spend it. Let's uh, spend one, two, three, four. Uh, let's see. How much do I have total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That means I need one, two, three, four, five, six, and I could get over here and I could do a search. So let's see. Can I do that? I want to save this for the search. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. That's all I need. Right. So. Let's go on ahead and keep the white card, because those are very, very handy to activate team focus or being lucky. So I'm going to spend one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm spending all of these as one movement, which, which is important. Most of the time, it doesn't really matter. You could like move piecemeal. I could play a card and do a move. And then at the end of my move, I can move again. But, yeah, all right. But if we were doing sentry, I would want to spend them all as once because only at the end of my movement do I have to check if I sneaked. Now, I'm not trying to sneak right now. I'm just, but I'm still moving anyway. That's a total of six, which gives me one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to search over here. And uh, I've got two plus one plus three means I have found this. And it's more food. Oh, yeah, baby. We started out with nothing. And now we have enough food. Okay. And then I've got this. I could use it to move here, because you can see this is one big space. I can move here, and this whole space is adjacent to him. I can't move here. Oh, by the way, also, as soon as I reach this spot, there's a little search thing. So I had to, before I did anything else, search. You make your way up the rusty stop sign that is filled, or is sharply tilted to the side. If this is your first time on this page during this campaign, read 9-3. So this would happen. Now, spoiler alert, this is not my first time. Uh, and this is actually a really cool moment that happens. And so I don't want to, even if even if I weren't, I'm not going to spoil this for you. I'm not. I'm going to say, I because I've already been here. So this event does not happen again. It happened the first time we were here. It doesn't happen anymore. And so I'm done. I've still got one more card. I could use it to move, but I'm going to hold on to this because wild cards are super useful. And my turn is over. There's no threat. I'm done. It is Mumple's or Grumble's turn. She draws one. See, I, I told you there were six threat cards. I can shuffle. No, I can't. There we go. Close enough, close enough, close enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five, five, five. Put that back in there. All right, and our little buddy is going to attack. And here's the interesting thing. These go randomly here. Um, after his attack is over, all of these will go away. Not just the one he was on, but they will all go away. So after Grumple is done, he's going to attack. Grumple does not have much. Grumple is kind of stuck. Ugh. All right. So after Grumple's turn is over, he's going to attack, and he's going to do a one, which means he's going to do an assault, a scalt, uh, an assault scurry, which means he cannot do a ranged attack. Which means he's going to come after our little buddy here, because to attack Grumple, he'd have to go one, two, or you know, he'd have to go one, two, three, four, as opposed to only one, two, three to get, to, or one, two, three to get to me. So he's coming for me. I know that's happening. So, I think Grumple will go on ahead and give me one defense. So, I've got a little bit more defense on my turn. And, as sad as it is, Grumple's just going to spend all three of these to very slowly wade into the water and not get very far. All right. At the end of the turn, the Meekling says, I can move up to two spaces, and after attacking, if possible, move two spaces towards the nearest clue token. Now, unfortunately, this Scurry only gets him to move one, two. He can't reach me! And he doesn't have a ranged attack because he didn't do a squeak shot. So, no attack, no harm, no foul. I didn't need this defense. Okay, easy peasy, and now these went away. 
No problem. And now it is our man Mazaya's turn again. He's got two cards. He's going to discard these so he can draw six. The more cards he draws, the more opportunities this Meekling has to attack. I think I'll just we'll stick with these. One, two, three, four. Um, because hey, I could do it. A, I could trigger. I can say this is a ranged attack of one, and I can bo boost it with another one. Let's see what else we can do. I could boost it again and again. So I could do a ranged four attack and take this little guy out before he causes any trouble, which is what I'm going to do. Alrighty, and then I, I, so I can't. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Let's do it this way. Let's go with a one, and now I can bump this up with ones or greens. A one, a one, a one. And a two, because this is a green. So that gives me a base attack of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can hit this guy with nine. His defense, though, is uh, only six. He is not, the little mice are not as tough as the rats. So I don't, th I, I, I could overkill it, but I'm going to save this because I like wild cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, plus zero. All right, so it's eight versus six. Eight! Phew! That was a close one. Oh, he did his best to defend his little mousy self, but he didn't. And I'm um, using the toothpick crossbow. Boo! He's gone. Never knew what hit him. All right. And uh, so he's gone. Fine. And there was uh, loot. We get two more food. Nice. All right. And I've still got some cards. So this is a blue. I'm going to use this to go one, two to get through all this blue. And I don't need to move anymore. And now I've got this one, which I could trigger a search. Let's go on ahead and do that. Because it, um, it's a one plus my one is two. Plus two is four. I've also searched here. And I found a battery. How nice. Okay. Easy peasy. So this makes up for that really uh, beating we took last time. So that was it. And you know what? At the end of my turn, I'm just going to leave. We're done. We're trying to get through here as fast as possible so that we can move on. It is now Grumple's turn. One, two, three, four, five. Although, remember, at the end of my turn, if I'd wanted, Grumple could have nested, healed, lost the batteries. Oh, also, I'm forgetting. Gr Grumple is rattled. Still need to deal with that. Uh-oh. And meanwhile, time is passing. If, uh, if, if more threat comes out, we're going to lose time. Grumple needs to get out of here. Uh, and Grumple needs a defense card. Grumple doesn't have a defense card. Grumple is going to spend one, two, three to cross this blue line. And then, so uh, it's, it's this whole area. And then one, two, and Grumple is gone. Just like that. In and out. Uh, didn't even stop to get the rest of the cheese. We are done. The exit says, when leaving, move to an adjacent. So that was easy peasy. Now, from Gutter Doom, we can head over to North Bend or down to Chandeliers. Which one? Which one? Page 57? Page 39? I don't know, folks, because I'm going to stop right there. Because that should give you a pretty good idea of what Aftermath is all about. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.